pattern is a fun way of adding life and self-expression to your wardrobe and your personal style. In my previous video, I spoke about the fact that some of us, or maybe even most of us, limit ourselves to a very strict color palette. But I think we all can have so much fun by adding a little bit of oomph to our outfits with print and pattern. With that being said, it can easily look immature, childish, or a little bit circus-like. But in today's video, I want to break down some of these concepts and help you introduce print and pattern into your wardrobe no matter where you are on your style journey. When you start including print and pattern into your wardrobe, it is important that the colors that you choose will actually flatter you. So it's really important to already go for colors that you know suit you and that you have in your wardrobe. Also, talking about color, it is good if you can limit the amount of colors that you are wearing to three colors. This makes it visually quite easy to interpret and visually consume, and it doesn't become too overwhelming. Only if you are very experienced, I would say go for more than three colors, but that could easily look childlike or immature. If you stick to the maximum number of three, that is perfect. The only exception that I have to this rule is when you want to go monochrome or tonal. In other words, wearing shades of. So in other words, shades of say blue, light blue, navy blue, sky blue, and so forth. Or then pinks, light pink, dark pink, even working your way to a red. If you do that, it also is quite easily to visually consume and you can add maybe more than three shades of that color without seeming um, too overwhelming, but do know that is a bold choice and if you are keen, go for it. Let's talk about area and I specifically want to focus in on the surface area, the amount of space that the print and pattern is going to take up out of your entire outfit or then body. If you are starting out, start with a smaller surface area. Think about a small scarf that you can maybe tie around your head or your arm. If you are um, into some formal shirts, maybe a colorful cuff that you can twist around, that is so cool. And sometimes that cuff is repeated in the neck area, that can look really cool. And if you are more experienced and you want to include more prints and pattern, go for a caftan or a full dress. Um, but if you start with a smaller surface area and work your way up, I think that's best. On to placement. Placement of the print and pattern can also have a great impact on how confident you feel when wearing it. I would suggest starting away from your face and working towards your face. So in other words, rather placing it further away because when people look at you, the first thing that they notice um, will be your face and maybe your pretty smile and your eyes. But if you have loads of colors and print up by your face, it might be too much. Um, if you are not confident and it's not being done perfectly. So if you place it further away and learn to build confidence in it, it might be better. So say you want to start off with say a scarf or a handbag that you carry in your hand or crossbody for instance that is further away. Then move on to shorts or a skirt, then go closer with a top and then finally you can end up with your entire body being covered by say a dress. For men, a fun way could be socks or perhaps even a tie or a pocket square. Now that we've spoken about color, the surface area and the placement of the print and pattern, let's move on to the physical type, the print and pattern, that what the actual picture is going to be made um, up of. So of course it's going to be a difference in colors, so usually it's in the form of a um, small little image being repeated or a drawing um, or something of that nature. I would go for something familiar. Examples of familiar prints are polka dots, stripes, check, animal print, um, paisley and so forth. But say you are starting out, let's use the polka dot example, right? You can start off with a small, very fine polka dot print that is evenly spaced, it's quite conservative, it's nothing too bold. But then you can move on to a polka dot print that is slightly bigger and maybe the polka dots aren't completely um, organized in a square um, grid type of pattern. 
And then from that point on, a polka dot print that is not done with dots, but actually perhaps say stars or something like that. Um, and if you are really um, into your printing pattern and you are quite creative in your clothing, go for a bold polka dot print. So the idea here is to start with something familiar and work your way up to something a bit more bold. Another idea here is something that's tried and tested by perhaps a brand. I included this Burberry bag um, into my wardrobe back in 2018 and I had so much joy wearing it. It's had a little bit of wear and tear and I fixed it up a couple of times. I actually have a video linked for you. Um, but I still love this bag to bits. And the colors in it worked really well with a lot of the clothing I was and I still am wearing today. So that is something that is a fun way of intro introducing a small little bit, something familiar like the Burberry print, um, but it's not too overwhelming. Building on this idea, if you have a high contrast in the colors, it's going to seem more bold. And if it's something a little bit more subdued, so the color difference is not massive, it's going to be a little bit less bold and perhaps make you feel a little bit safer. Let's quickly talk about the size of the print and pattern. So the size of the actual picture on the piece of clothing. Um, it's usually said with InDesign that it shouldn't be larger than the fist, your fist. So this top bit of your fist or then perhaps even the little palm of your hand. It shouldn't be bigger than this and I must say this is already quite big so really be careful to go for a too big picture because it might be disproportionate to the size of your body and the piece of cloth actually covering um, the piece of your body. So rather go for something smaller instead of something too bold. And then if you've included quite a bit of print and pattern into your outfit, I wouldn't go for a too bold and too loud design, except if it's really well done or it's by a brilliant designer, think great carpet vibes, right? So rather go for something a little bit more um, slick, simple, um, in silhouette, that it doesn't have to try and compete with one another. So think too many frills and too many colors and too many prints. That might seem a bit overwhelming. And just to finish off, a lot of what I've said was like, start in one place and work your way up. I don't always think that it's necessary to do that. Sometimes working with just the basics and including a little bit of fun polka dots into your wardrobe is more than enough. And you don't have to feel that you have to work your way up. This is just an easy way of thinking about how you can introduce print and pattern into your wardrobe if you've not done so. Um, so don't feel um, if you've already mastered even polka dot prints that you have to go onto a very bold polka dot print. Um, I don't think more is always better, um, bigger is better. I don't think so. And sometimes even just working with simple things, having small bits of character and life in your, in your outfit is more than enough. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that you try and look into your wardrobe as to what you have and what you might experiment with. And let me know what you decide to include in your next outfit. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Have a good day. Bye.